So, I wanted to get a camera slider um, just to make my movies more interesting, a bit look a bit more professional. But do you know what? They're pretty expensive if you're only going to use them once or twice. So I decided to make my own. So what I've got here is first of all a tripod. Um, got this one off eBay, about fifteen pounds. Not essential, but it will make your shots look a bit better. Over here, a draw slider. Uh, this one's twenty-four inches. Um, can be got from any DIY store, but in this case, it, well, I think it was B and Q. It's about twelve pounds. A bull head, universal one, nothing too flash, no spirit level, etc. But only a couple of quid off eBay. A quarter-inch um, flathead uh, countersunk uh, screw to go in it. Some washers, just in case. A small nut and bolt. Um, a universal head adapter quarter inch as well and finally just a long countersunk um, screw and um, this will effectively become a handle so the longer the better really makes your life a bit easier so the tools you need a drill and a pair of pliers um, I've got a couple of drill bits there um, I think the six mil one will actually be good enough for what I need for my case but um, let's run through it. it's pretty simple as you can see there's not many bits here so um, let's see how we get on so to start with we'll start with the draw slider so obviously your draw slider naturally just goes one way so in this case that doesn't matter to us we actually want to improve the movement so the first thing remove the rubber grommet off once you've removed it there's a little tab on the end get some pliers and just bend that out straight doesn't matter how so that basically you give yourself more movement as you can see so if I hold it there so you now can go that way and we can also go that way we've got one little other job to do on the other end it's got tabs that stop the ball bearings coming out however on this end it obviously had the big tab in the end so what we want to do is just pinch the sides slightly like so and that should stop the last ball bearings coming out as you can see it just gets stuck a little bit so now we've prepped the actual mechanism you want to take the sides out and we're going to drill two holes slightly bigger that one and that one what we're going to do is on this one up here we're going to make the handle and then on the other one we're going to do the base in the next part of the video so the next stage now is to put the handle on and also the mount for the camera so I pre-drilled those holes so they're six mil now um, there and also in the middle so what we'll do is we'll start with the handle so what you actually have to do is just put the not through there sorry the screw through there washer and nut. Now you could make this look much nicer if you wanted by using a smaller screw and then maybe having a hand a plastic handle that you'd put on it. But as I'm gonna only use this once or twice, I'm not too bothered what it looks like. So that's done. So the next bit. So this is where we're going to mount the actual camera ball joint. Now in my case, I know that my little screw is too long. So I already have some washers to stick on. Now I got all these washers, the nuts, etc., and the screws all from the shed without you know buying any of it. So it is all just stuff that's around and keeping the cost down. So at the end of the day, this will probably be taken apart afterwards and not used. So it's a simple case of just holding it and doing it up tight. Like so. Do that up a little bit so it actually looks like it works. There you go. So now we have our handle and our head on there. So now the next stage is to actually make it so that we can mount it to the base. So the next stage to this is to put the mount on to go onto your tripod. So, as you can see, I'd already pushed this out so the actual half inch, sorry, quarter inch um, connector is removed. What we're going to do now is bolt this through the rail. So, if we push the rail along, and we'll get to the middle hole just here, we're obviously going to mount this underneath. 
So what we need to do is get a small screw. To be honest, as small as you've got is probably better in terms of head height and width. It just gives a better clearance. Then put it through washer nut and do that up. I would suggest doing everything up tight obviously. Um, I'm just doing this by hand to show. Um, but the tighter they are, obviously the better they are in terms of less movement around with it. So there we go. So we've now got our device. So quite simply put, as you can see, this one's already come a bit loose where I haven't done it up properly. So got our mount for the camera, our handle and the rail. And quite simply put, slides along neatly. So what I'll do now, I'll uh, tighten it all up. But um, just before I move on to that, um, I'll just talk about what issues you might get. So you might get that this catches slightly when moving back and forth. If that's the case, just flip it over and on the two that are causing the problem, see that one's caught slightly there, all you need to do is balance this on across two device, put a socket in there and just tap it with a hammer. And then what that will do is that will bend the metal up slightly and push the head face that further away and it will go through this part without any issues. Same for this one, although because I've used two different threads, you can see that head's much smaller than that head. So what I'll do is mount it on the tripod now and show you how it looks. And um, that's it. It's nice and simple, to be honest. Not too many problems. And uh, hopefully people find it useful. Okay, I've got it all set up now. So as you can see, it attaches onto the base, as I said. Handle over here. And obviously the camera here. Like, if you can get a smaller screw for here and get rid of the washers, which I'll probably do, or just make it a bit more stable as well. But to give you an idea of how smooth it is, And then obviously bringing it back as well. I'll speed that up a bit, otherwise it will take forever, but you get the gist and obviously got a really good range on it as well. Now I'll obviously be able to do it more stable when uh, I'm not holding a camera in the other hand, but what I'll do is I'll just do a very quick test and stick it on the end of this video just to give you an idea of uh, what it can produce. Um, I've only built this so that I can actually use it to go do some uh, videos of the car I built, so Hopefully I'll be able to post up a video of that shortly.